So here we are back in St. Augustine. Got my black coffee. Great to be here. I'm doing the trolley, trolley ride, which I haven't done since 2016, so that should be quite interesting, as I said. Oh, look at the St. Augustine jail gallows. Executions on this site. Uh, Sim Jackson in 1906 and Charles Powell, February 28, 1908. That's quite late, isn't it? That's quite late. Yeah, I think people were hanged. Two people were hanged here. So we, yeah, we're just going to pick up the um, the trolley and go for a ride around and see how it goes. Oh, it is good to be here. This is my fourth time uh, at St. Augustine. Yeah, we're on the site of the old county jail, built in 1891, which is great. Check that out. 1948, showing vehicle. Just getting our tickets to go on the trolley. Yep. Oh, mate, he's still here. He's still here. <laughs> Here comes the trolley. Went there with other videos. He marched him up to Fort Carolina. A block over to our right, called the Rosario Line, which was the western border of town. And the ocean makes up the southern and eastern borders of St. Augustine. Now these walls were manned 24 hours a day by armed soldiers prepared to fire on any unwanted visitors to town. But in addition to having the armed soldiers, Please remain seated until the trolley comes to a complete stop in here to bell. And we're approaching the Visitor Information Center. We'll find a free St. Augustine History Museum. Three or two large stone pillars. Those are the city gates. Erected in 1808 as part of the Northern Defense Wall. Doesn't sound like a nice evening. So I'm sure no one made that mistake more than once in their life. City gates, just ahead on our left. And coming up on the right is St. George Street. It's the center of shopping for downtown St. Augustine where you can find the oldest wooden schoolhouse and the St. Podios Greek Orthodox Shrine. Again, please remain seated until the trolley comes to a complete stop and you're to bell. And always exit backwards as if stepping off a ladder. This will be stop number four, the city gates. Now you'd think they would have figured that out long before the night burned down, but apparently not. And coming up on the right is the Colonial Experience. Two acres of living history where you can climb a 35 foot watchtower, see a blacksmith performing his work, and he'll shoot a few cannons while you're here. And they also have a great flag collection. And we're heading on to Hippolyta Street. It was built very narrow for a couple of reasons. One is that it made it difficult to march large amounts of soldiers through here information, and the other is that it acts as a natural air conditioning system by funneling the cool air off the bay directly into the heart of the city. Now the British added doors to the streets, glass windows, and the upper levels made of wood. And most of the older homes and buildings in town are a combination of Spanish and British architecture. And up ahead on our right, where you see the flags out front, is the Columbia Restaurant. Stop number seven. St. George and High Potter the Streets. Down in what is now New Smyrna Beach. And once that farm failed, all the camp went down, gathered up the Menorcans and returned them to St. Augustine. So he petitioned the governor for an area of town for them to stay. And they were granted the area that we're in right now. The longest continuous. 
continuously occupied European settlement in North America. That's because they stayed here through absolutely everything. One time, and it is one of the most beautiful buildings in St. Augustine. It was the first hotel in America to have hot and cold running water and electricity in every room. In fact, they had electricity here five years before the White House. Now, a lot of people were afraid of electricity in the late 1800s. They didn't really understand what it was, but they certainly knew it could be dangerous. So many of the guests staying at the Ponce de Leon were afraid to touch the light switches. Flagger hired a crew of men to go from room to room and do nothing but that. Pretty amazing. Now, those windows were insured at a value of $131 million. Which those were struck across the bay at night, about a foot below the waterline. Uh, and across the street is the Lightyear Museum. The hotels. The Alcazar to our left, and of course the Ponce de Leon to our right. Now, standing out in front of the college is the statue of Henry Flagler. He's got his hand in his pocket and he's staring across the street at the bank. Yalaha Plantation. Yalaha means orange in Seminole. Can I get a Yalaha back there, everyone? Pull some of that whiskey, rum, vodka, or gin. Maybe all four. And St. Augustine is the patron saint of brewers. It's used for administrative offices, but they do hold weddings and other special events here. Stood four foot eleven, everyone. Four eleven. But that was pretty typical of Spanish men back then. Can you pull in? Yeah. Freedom and Black Raven, Pirate Adventure Ship. Now, the Victory 3 is currently out of the water getting a little bit of work done, but you'll see the Black Raven and Scooter Freedom to our left in just a moment. And the Pirates on the Black Raven put on a great show. That ship's a lot of fun. 74 Lighthouse. And that's the second version of the Lighthouse built here. The first one crumbled right into the sea. This is the first house built since that burn. It's going to be stop number 14, the old house. Now when you see the oldest house from out here on St. Francis Street, it can be a bit deceiving because you just see the front of the house and the front of their museum. But there are several acres of property here. We have a couple of homes on the property. And they have a great museum with hundreds of artifacts. In fact, the building that houses their museum was the first building in St. Augustine erected exclusively to become a museum. And they have beautiful gardens where they hold weddings and other special events. The city of St. Augustine throughout their history. There's a lot going on here besides just the oldest house and its guided tour. That's a good look at the Bridge of Lions from back here. Takes you from St. Augustine over to Anastasia Island. And that was completed in 1927. Named Firm and Faithful. Now these two lions were dedicated by Dr. Andrew Anderson II, former owner of the Martin House and once the mayor in town. He gave him a direct shot out of the port into the Atlantic Ocean. Now the inlet is about a mile and a half out. That was a great tour. There are 21 stops on the trolley tour. I got off at stop 16, just by the uh, fort, um, which I might go in and not decided yet, because I've actually done videos from there before. Um, but we're gonna have a walk down George, St. George Street, the main thoroughfare. Let's see what's there. Oh, the teeny martini bar. I look at the webcam of this place. Breakfast, lunch, and full bar. And thank you, Nelson, for being a fantastic host on the trolley. I think we'll walk up this way and go up to the entrance to St. George Street. Here we are, the old gate. This gate opened in 1739, provided the only access through the defence line of the north side of the Spanish part of St. Augustine. I wonder if the old schoolhouse is open. I'd love to go back in there. I haven't been there since 2016. It's nice to be back here after. At least, yeah, 2016 I was here last. Um, we had the privy. The oldest wooden schoolhouse privy.
So the schoolhouse is from the 1700s, originally built. It's absolutely beautiful. There's the kitchen. Good to, I've always wanted to come back here. When I was here last, it was uh, closed in 2019. And the creepy mannequins. Well, well, good to see you. Welcome to the old school and to the mid-1800s. I say that because this is how the nation's oldest wooden schoolhouse looked at that time, and our clothing is of that period. As I said in 2016, it was like an episode of Thunderbirds. Thank you for coming to visit. Don't forget your diploma and enjoy your stay in the nation's oldest city. Bye. That's what it'll look like upstairs in the living quarters. So I love this, this is great. There was the class of 1864, there was a reunion in 1931. Um, and I mean, how cool is that? A reunion in 1931, how did they get hold of everyone again? Now they just gone to Facebook, oh, there you are. 1864 students, 1931. This is brilliant. 1872, rules for teachers. Teachers each day will fill lamped clean chimneys. Each teacher will bring a bucket of water and scuttle for coal for the day's session. Make your, make, make your pens carefully. Men teachers may take one evening each week for courting purposes. Or two evenings a week they go to church regularly. God, how times have changed. Women teachers who marry or engage in unseemly conduct will be dismissed. God, they'd love the 21st century, wouldn't they? I think sometimes things have gone improved for the better. So I just want to bring you back in here, because it's such a lovely place to, to come and visit. I do recommend coming to visit here. It's just at the top by the um, city gates. Just walk down to St George's Street a little bit and you'll come to it. It's really nice. Right, good to be back to the oldest wooden schoolhouse. Let's carry on down to Jewel Street. Um, a little wander around and then we should shortly think of lunch. The nice lady in there said, you know, they get a bit embarrassed if people from Britain or something or Germany come in and they're showing off a building from the 1700s. And I was saying, no, not at all. I said, this guy got like a church down the road from me, it was like over a thousand years old. It's still history, it doesn't matter. It's history that's in contention with that country, so. Look at this. This building, 1762. Look at this clapboard house here. We're a bit spoilt for choice for lunch. There's some great eateries around here. Dr. Peck's house, building date from 1750. Oh, I remember coming in here before, yeah. Oh, nice cool breeze coming in. It's like a little shopping arcade. Put my head in, I saw nothing more. Just going to head back out. In memory of Father Pedro Camps, the spiritual leader of the Norkian, the Norkian colony. I do like this little square. We came around here on the trolley. There's a little road over there, a little part, a sort of side street, which is one of the oldest in St. Augustine, I didn't know about. 
on previous visits so uh, we're going to go and check that out the governor's building there oh it's hot today ah so the church of england was established here during the british rule in the late 1700s so this is it a village street a vile street in Spanish times, this was the street of the Royal Hospital. It was renamed in 1923 in honour of the birthplace of Pedro Menendez de Avils, founder of St. Augustine. A great look down here anyway. What a pleasant little street. St. Augustine Historical Society. Sigi Kirby Smith House. Historical 225 year old boarding home museum. Seventeen ninety-eight house. There. Ah oh, yes, another one I remember. The Father Miguel O'Reilly House Museum, 1691. 1691. Yeah, and if I'm not mistaken, yes, this old well, one of the very first wells in St. Augustine. This one right here. Obviously not a well anymore. I don't know what I've done, by the way. I've put my shoulder out of joint, or it's a cold shoulder. I just woke up with it a couple of days ago. I've either pulled a muscle or something, but uh, yeah, there's nowhere really to do any grounding. Try and get rid of the uh, little bit of pain, but hey. Uh, the first public marketplace was established in this plaza by Governor Mendez de Canzo in 1598. No, then it's probably not that old, but got to do some doors, even in another country, got to do some doors. Quick look in the church while we're here. in a church and luckily I'm following it with a pub lunch, hopefully. Super peaceful in here, very peaceful. I'm speaking very quietly because people are here. Um, just chilling out really. It's raining in St. Augustine. Cheers. Well, that's a lovely meal in the Bull and Crown. Dodged the rain. Helped the waitress, lovely lady, with her trip to England next year. Um, yeah. All good. Let's carry on. If you're ever in Florida, really do come to um, St. Augustine. There's so much to see. Great food, lots of history. That is a really cool, chilled out place to come to. And St. George's Street, the main thoroughfare. There's restaurants, clothing firms, bars, very cool. A 
Okay, I wasn't going to do it because I've done good videos from there from the past, but we've got time to spare, so let's go over to the fort. So here we are at Castello San Del Marcos Fort, once owned by the British. Yeah, there's a lot of forts you'll find in Florida Fort Lauderdale, Fort Myers, all from the uh, military campaigns that they had here. But there it is, if you can see. As I said, I've done videos from here before. I'm so sorry, but I was here. I wanted to explore it because it's fascinating. Let's go. Okay, let's have a look around. The amount of uh, different hands and different countries that took control of this fort. Originally a Spanish um, installation, then the British took over, and then finally the Americans took charge. Interesting. Ah, the British period. If you're in St. Augustine, you have to come here. It's really interesting. Really interesting. The powder room. For a little hole, this is the powder room. You remember, remember this from before. Just watching everybody, if I ever became, which is unlikely, uh, president of the world, I would ban vertical videoing on your phones. Absolutely ban vert vertical videoing. As a filmmaker, it does my nutting. <laughs> saying Mark that's not really important is it well maybe not but
absolutely love this place absolutely love it I don't care how many times I come back to it it's still refreshing you know what I mean There's a nice view into St. George Street and the trolley ride. This tour is done through um, Grey Line, which I've used many times before. They're a really good company. You can pretty much get everything done in the day in St. Augustine. Um, you can do the fort, museums, everything if you get here sort of early enough. Yeah, it's really, really cool. Okay, thank you. Marvellous fort that you are. Have you got time to kill? Let's go down to the uh, big cross. What do you say? So America acquired Florida in 1821 from the Spanish and then it became a state in 1845. I think 1845, like Miami's only been a city since the early what, 1900s and now look at it, how quickly um, progress is made in building. It's fascinating. I also didn't know that, that Florida is well famous for oranges. But it's not um, indigenous to this, count, uh, to this country. That's actually from Asia. And you'll see a lot of cows around. Cows come from the English and the Dutch. I did not know that until today. So there you go. Uh, yeah, so let's go. One thing I've never been to in St. Augustine is the Fountain of Youth. I don't know why. I'll show you in a minute. This area boasted the very first mass in the New World. The very first mass in the New World. Which is incredible. Now when I came here before in 2019 there was loads of building work going on, but that seemed to have stopped. There is the bridge open. So let's, uh, let's kind of look. So there you go. St. Augustine, the first permanent European settlement in the New World. This gigantic stainless steel cross was erected in 1965 to mark the 400th anniversary of the settling of St. Augustine. And it's pretty imposing, you can pretty much see it from all around. Sorry if I'm repeating myself in my previous video, but here we go. This site has been called America's Most Sacred Acre. Tradition holds that the first mass in the new colony was celebrated here. Isn't that amazing? I wonder if the little chapel is open. Let's have a look. 
a fourth building on this foundation. There were people in here praying, so I let them do their praying. Out of respect, of course. When I was in here last, I got a bit of a whoosh. One of my whooshes, I call it, but okay, nothing today. Absolutely nothing. Virgin Mary. It's a lovely little chapel there. So this is the fourth building on this site since, I think, the 1500s. back at some footage and I got some weird dark lines at the top of the picture. I'm not saying it's anything out of the ordinary, it could be just the light, the light flickering, but I don't seem to have it now and I'm walking in exactly the same position as I was before. Um, I don't know what that is. Let's just walk around, just make sure. Oh no, there it is, there it is, there it is. It's, it's just the light, it's the light. Ignore me. It's just spent half an hour meditating in the chapel so I'm not a Christian as you know well no nothing to do with that but just a nice quiet place to contemplate this year and things that have happened I'm just going to go quickly back to the uh, cross to the base of the cross and uh, show the scale of it this thing is huge a bit of nausea when you're looking up at it like I did with the star flyer over at International Drive looking at that the other day oh. yeah the Great Cross and there you have it from the Great Cross in St Augustine my fourth time being here. I didn't think we were going to come out here, but obviously we did. Fantastic. If you do want to visit here, use Grey Line. It's great. You get here about nine o'clock in the morning and you've got about seven hours to explore the place. Which you plenty of time to eat, to chill out, explore the old town and St George's Street. And if you haven't liked the video, please like, subscribe, all that normal stuff. And uh, we'll see you next time for the, probably the last video from the 2023 trip to Florida which will be wild Florida which I've done before and an airboat ride hopefully see some alligators hope you're having a great day and we'll see you later take care